where they haven't shut down the airport. The airport? Oh, I just saw plane land. I'm just surprised they haven't shut it down. No, Those are it's this windy. They do. Very windy. Oh. Yeah. Huh. yeah, it's not. It's not storms that close down the airport. It's okay. wind. Interesting. Um, hmm. Is it? Is it? Is there a lot of turbulence because of the mountains, or? It's just the cross. It's, I think it has probably something to do with the. The. Uh, probably like the. Um, dynamics of the air coming over the mountain. It probably creates like low pressure pockets or something where it's just dangerous to take off and land. I remember years ago when I lived in Phoenix that used to get too hot in the summertime for planes to take off and land. Really? Yeah. Because the air, when it's too warm, it's not dense enough for to create lift. Hmm. Yeah. So when they get beyond like 115 degrees uh, at the airport, they would just shut down the airport. That would be about the worst time of year to get caught out in the seven airplanes. Yeah. I was returning from, I can't remember where it was from, but I was coming back into Phoenix and the landing was in summer. And coming down for a landing all of a sudden, uh, just hit this positive drop and everybody's screaming. <laughs> this is a pretty good turnout. This is better than we get in uh, San Francisco. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I promoted it a little bit on Facebook. And I have 2,500 Facebook friends oh. in Reno. So I don't know, that might produce five or six or two or three. How many registered greens well, are there three, in Nevada? 4108. And there's, that was as of December of last year, it was, it was 4108. I've got all of them in a database. Um, unfortunately, Clark County stopped reporting, this is pre-meeting, um, Clark County stopped, stopped reporting the greens as greens and started calling them other and threw them over into the other category. So we lost three-fourths of our greens officially, and then a month or two later, the other counties followed suit. Um, so the well, it just makes it hard to find in the database, or what? Yeah, it, it hurts our brand, if you want to talk about it in consumer sense. We, if you go to register today, and I have forms here, um, and you check Green Party, when you give it to the uh, clerk, mm -hmm. and it gets up to Secretary of State, the clerks of the counties are calling you other. They're not calling you Green Party. So, so the database now on the Secretary of State's uh, site is not reporting us. It it says uh, it says Democrats, Republicans, Independent or non-party. I haven't looked lately. And uh, American Independent, Libertarian, other. So now there's a few little misfit parties that are in the other category. Is that just a threshold thing? Yes. Um, in two, I'll, I'll give you some history. Um, uh, I think we can do a call to order because we have more than three uh, people here that are uh, registered green, I assume. Do we have three registered greens? We have two, yeah. three, four, seeing four. This is, a, a, this is an official meeting. So <laughs> this is actually an official meeting of the Green Party of Nevada. Um, so, uh, I think first we'll just go around the, cor uh, around the corner and maybe a brief introduction and a little background. Start. Uh, Hal Bopel, I'm a uh, work in hydrology, and uh, my wife and I have lived here since about 2005. Dave Asher, third generation of Reno. You brought up the time frame here, we're going to do that. Uh, lead the buy local campaign and the local chapter of a new start of Green Business Chamber of Commerce working with businesses to become sustainable and good stewards of the local economy. David Gibson with Envirolution. I've uh, lived in Reno for three and a half years now and helped teach students about energy efficiency and sustainability. Ted Lavatter, part-time entrepreneur, part-time political activist. Been in Reno for like five years now. Your are Trent? Ted. Oh, Ted. I'll give you a card on the way out. Oh, okay, awesome. We got a sign of cheat here too. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, ben Castro. Um, 
I love the platform. I read the bylaws. I dig them. So, so I'm going to probably skip a little. Well, this is the next one. You're ahead of 98% of the population. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no one reads the bylaws. I'm uh, Chris Harden. I uh, actually just moved to Reno uh, in July from Oklahoma City. And uh, I was just excited that I had the option to register as something other than Republican or Democrat. And uh, I'm familiar with the, uh, uh, with the a little bit of the traditions of the Green Party, so I thought it would be interesting to sign up. Awesome. Support. Yeah, thank you for helping organize the event. Too. Sure. Uh, I'm David Curtis. Uh, I, I um, found the Green Party, I think, in 2000 uh, because of Ralph Nader ran for president. And I, I didn't even know about the Greens really before that. And then uh, I started getting active with the uh, state party in 2006, I think it was, when Craig Berkman uh, ran for governor and helped him on that. And uh, then 2008, Ralph Nader came back to run for president again, I think as an independent at that point. So I helped him get signatures uh, to get on the ballot then in 2008. But I, I, I've been with the Green Party actively since 2006. Uh, I ran for governor in 2010. Uh, and the reason I did that was we were in danger, the Green Party was in danger of losing its ballot access. Um, we have to have 1% of the voters to have, be a, and some other things, to be a ballot access party. And right now that number is about seven to 8,000 people. It fluctuates, it's depending on how many people participate in the, in the um, elections. Um, so right now we have, approximately 4108, give or take, non-officially now. Um, I, I've been con in contact with the Secretary of State's office and uh, he, he just gave me a ball, his agent gave me a ballpark of 3,000 something. So he's kind of low guessing. But so, we, so officially we have between 3,000 and 4108. Um, and, and I have the, the most recent database. Um, so really, in, um, the reason I'm calling this meeting is we haven't had an official meeting uh, for over a year of the state party. Uh, we, we attempted this restart in June in Las Vegas. And, uh, we had four people at that meeting, uh, but not enough uh, registered greens to, to be an official meeting. Uh, so this time I thought I would organize in both cities. And so concurrently, uh, Brandon Parcell is doing the same thing in Las Vegas. And uh, he, the last time I saw he had six confirmed people. Uh, one of them just bowed out on Facebook. He had to work tonight. So he has about five people there. And, and the, um, the reason we're having this meeting is our bylaws say that uh, the, state, the state party needs to meet uh, ideally quarterly. But we were doing two annual meetings a year consistently. And then the counties meet pretty much every month. Um, so this is our the first official meeting in uh, probably over a year. And then we'll have another one uh, in three months. And the way the ball, uh, what I'd like to do is go through the bylaws quickly with you with just the relevant issues that we're experiencing right now. Um, but, but basically the goal is to um, restock the executive council. Um, I'm, I'm the last uh, member from the council who's uh, still participating, although I am not a registered Nevada Green. Uh, I, I relocated to California in uh, 2011, and uh, so I'm active with the Marin County Greens. I'm their secretary of the county party, and I'm active on the state party. I'm a delegate to the uh, GPUS party at, from California. Uh, so, so I've got three hats there, and then because I was the last officer to run for an office in Nevada, um, I, I, you know, I'm the last person to sort of hand the ball off to the, the new crop of greens. Um, so, <laughs> so if I get run over by a truck or something, <laughs> the bylaws, uh, I have a copy of the bylaws, which we'll review now, and then I'll sort of point out uh, the, the hurdles. And the hurdles are fairly modest. Um, we, if everybody wants to, um, if we have enough people in the next few months, uh, there's just you know, two or three hurdles, and we're 
for reballot access. Um, the biggest one is that one percent threshold. Um, so, and we'll, we'll go through that. And are we going to be calling down with Vegas and have a joint meeting? Or is yeah, I keep calling him and I'm not getting a response. Uh, Brandon's leading a meeting at the Arts Factory, and I, I keep sending him the invite for the Google. And oh, it looks like we lost the connection. Let me try once again. Just please try again. I think uh, because I'm running Facebook at the same time, it's getting a little murky. Should. And. So we're recording this meeting, and then he, he's recording his meeting. And so we'll, po we'll post those tomorrow, worst case. But we were hoping to just stream it. And um, I think we probably don't have connection to Vegas yet. Try this, try again. Yeah, we could do a phone machine on a five minutes notice. OK. I'll just send or just somebody can light up their cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a cell phone. He's, they're meeting outside, so I don't know what the weather's like at the moment. And they may be scrambling around with technical issues. Um, so while I try that connection again, um, this, is, this is the legal document that was filed with the Secretary of State, um, and then the history of it, um, and I'll, I can pass this around. And, and, and it's available on the internet. If you Google Green Party of Nevada bylaws, you get this. You get a PDF from the Secretary of State's office. So, and just the history, um, this was filed initially during the Dean Heller administration in 2005. And that was, um, that was not the initial filing, but that was a thing called the amended certificate of existence. So anytime you change anything, the officers, the post office box, you have to file a new one of these. So that was done in 2005. Um, and then it was renewed in 2000, um, 2000. So the bylaws were filed in 2005 and then refiled as an attachment in 2010. Yeah, February 10th, 2010. So this was the last time we did an amended certificate of, of um, existence. And at that time, the um, executive council members were uh, Stacy Shin was co-chair, Billy Howard, uh, both of, of Reno area, uh, co-chair, treasurer Dennis Black, Craig Berglund was secretary, David Curtis, myself was at large, and Kathy Rusco was at large. So basically, it was five people to the north and one person to the south. Um, and then, since since this filing, um, when I had the meeting. <coughs> And so, so this was good. We were good to go. And then in 2010, I ran for governor, and I needed to get 1% of the vote to renew our ballot access. And I got like 0.65 or something, or 0.7. So I didn't get enough votes to renew our access. So we lost, we lost ballot access, um, but we're still listed as a party, but a non-ballot access party. Um, so, so I wrote a letter to the Secretary of State after the, la after the June meeting uh, of this last year. And I said, OK, we've, we've attempted this restart. Um, we have not elected new officers yet. But as soon as we do, um, you know, we'll, we'll file a new continuing of existence. So that, those are the steps. So we just need, um, we need a minimum of four people, I think, to do this. Um, the way the bylaws are structured, there are the four officers, the two co-chairs, secretary, treasurer, and then four at-large uh, people. And those people are just roaming around doing whatever they want to do. And if there's a problem with one of the main officers, they're like the replacement person. So, <laughs> so that's the current structure. Um, and there is also something in the bylaws we can go over that they strive to have a gender balance, so so it would be nice to have you know, oh, you know, not one gender <laughs> represented, and also geographic balance, which we've never had, frankly. Um, all the energy's been up north. Sounds heavy north. Yeah. By population, they should be ten times ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Ten times. Mm -hmm. They've got all the population, but apparently they're asleep at the wheel, and and also um, my personal opinion is that the structure. Oh, here we go. Try try again. Um, I think that because Las Vegas is such an, such an implant, 
You know, it's basically like the love boat that's sitting in the middle of the desert. Uh, it's probably one of the nonest green entities in the United States. Um, so, so it's really hard to. My, I, to my understanding, it's pretty a libertarian stronghold down there. Yeah, they they actually have uh, a strong sustainability, a lot of a strong sustainability movement down there. I was actually down in Vegas last week and went to a green chamber of count, uh, green chamber of commerce meeting. Mm -hmm. or, the green business chamber. Yeah, green business chamber. Yeah, and then that's out of San Francisco. Uh, uh, I'm pretty involved with a lot of nonprofits and businesses down there, um, and schools. Um, so I can. But what help Vegas gets to experience is just tough to communicate. That many people, everything struggles. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a, it's a tough population. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what you're whatever you're talking to down there. It's hard to it's hard to do by local campaign down there. Yeah. You could do it, but they wouldn't hit 10% more than what we can do, because we can communicate here. Yeah, so, I think you can do things that scale there, and if you can, my pitch is if you can convince a property owner in Las Vegas that it's going to save them a lot of money, they'll do it. If, if it's dumb, easy, and they save lots of money, they'll do it. So, so I think there's things that will apply there. But, but anything that takes some technical know-how or, or thinking too much or showing up a lot, you know, it doesn't happen in Las Vegas too much. Um, but that's only after a decade of it's trying. It's changing. Now. Downtown, this is Zappos and this oh, yeah. Vegas. It's not going to be the same Vegas in two years that we've ever known. Yeah, I think there's more than one Las Vegas now because there's, there's like the Zappos side. area. So um, that's the eclectic, um, you know, the new techie side. Mm -hmm. and they're putting a lot of, I mean millions and millions tens of hundreds of millions into downtown Vegas. Yeah. I mean, like entrepreneur incubators and business incubators. Green would be better now. Definitely. And I think I think anyone who's able to connect in with what Zappos is doing, you know, they're there. But you sort of have to be on the right side with the mayors and this They just funded a business plan husband. competition with a hundred thousand dollars cash and it was sixty percent participation in Northern Nevada, but it was Vegas money. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, it's great. Um and, and what, what I'm looking for is how, you know, how to apply the Green Party to what's happening in Nevada and how to make it more relevant so that um, people who bother to vote see it as a viable option and not just a throwaway vote. And, and I do think that um, there's a, there's a, when I left in, in 2011, what I saw was the tendency of the voting population was to go nonpartisan or independent. And that, that was the largest growth segment just of the of the voters was becoming I did just that I went independent. Yeah. It was becoming non nonpartisan and, and or independent. And because of Ralph Nader, what you just said. Mm -hmm. That was the thing to do then. Well I think also just the disgust with the gridlock between the two candidate uh, two parties and, and um, the perception that uh, the corruption perception of corruption. Um, it, it, to me that's one thing that keeps my interest in the Green Party is um, we don't take the corporate money and so theoretically our candidates could be clean, except that means they don't have enough money to run functional campaigns, which means they don't get elected. You know? but, but California's had a lot of success. Um, we basically have taken over Fairfax, California. We have, we have the town council of Fairfax. Um, all, all the, whole, the whole council is green. Uh, the last three or four mayors have been green in Fairfax. Um, we, you know, there's we uh, the state party in California is active in about half of the counties of California now, and and so if we're not if we're not ballot eligible at the state level, does that mean we've also lost, lost ballot access at the local level? Or no. It what it means is when I ran for governor, or when I ran for a state office, I had to get 300 signatures plus or minus and pay a fee, and I'm off. So that's how I got on the ballot. Okay. So after after that cycle, they upped the number. Uh, I'm not sure what they upped it to. They at least doubled it. And now, to compound it, um, when we lost access, if you wanted to run for town council or something, you have to get seven or eight thousand signatures. You, you'd have to get one percent of the uh, people who voted in the last gubernatorial election, even to run for. Local office. That's my belief. I think they work for it. Yeah. yeah. I paid fee. Mark, on. One question. Um, some of those communities you were talking about, how many of those have IRV? Oh, um, not sure. 
I know we advocate for IRB, uh, the party does in California. I, I am currently advocating for approval voting uh, because it's way easier than IRB. You don't have to know math, and everybody likes it. Um, okay. How's it? Is it similar in structure, or how is it different? Approval voting is um, you get candidate A, B, C, D. You can vote for as many as you want. Okay. So you can vote for A, B, C, C, D, whatever. Everybody, but they're taken in order. Yeah, it's an open ballot. You can vote for as many people as you like, and you don't have to rank them. The downside is you don't rank them. So so. They're, it's not a ranked choice. It's a sh it's a sh it's an approval. You're like like him, her, him, and and so when you count, so what it means is a minor party candidate gets a lot more votes, a whole bunch more votes, and they can no longer use the spoiler argument because you can vote for Mr. Obama or Mr. Romney, and you can vote for Jill Stein or Gary Johnson. Mm -hmm. You can vote for all four of them, and all your votes count. So that it's called approval voting, and I think and it doesn't require any weird multiple votes. It doesn't require any ranking. It doesn't require any any. Oh, isn't that like one person four votes or so however we, many votes you're doing? Whoever or? gets the most votes wins. You can vote for as many people as you want, hmm. well, one time. <laughs> it's called approval voting, and there's people uh, advocating it really hard now in the paper. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's fairly no. new. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a fellow in the Bay Area. Um, I forget his name. He's on Twitter. If you go to my Twitter feed, he's I retweeted him a couple days ago. He's he raised he did a crowd fund for twelve thousand dollars last week to just advocate for approval voting. And there's a video. And it, it solves so many problems. The only problem it doesn't solve is uh, I think IRB has a ranking system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people advocate for that. And it's a round off. It's a it, what it is is if somebody doesn't get past fifty, then they get they get uh, the rankings go up. You know, and these current bylaws. See, we're in gray area. The, the 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 bylaws that were last filed actually call for us to use IRV. Mm -hmm. What is that? I was hoping somebody else would ask. Yeah, instant <laughs> instant runoff, runoff voting. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's where you're. It's where you pick first, second, and third choice. You know, you rank your choices. Right. I really like Ronald Reagan. I sort of like the other guy. I can't stand this person. So, you know, so for example, like in the in the 2000 election, you could put Nader down and then pick Gore for your second wow. one, and it and it wouldn't be like tossing a vote away if Nader didn't get a majority. Then that would he would get rolled into the Gore vote right then and there. Yeah. Is what would happen. So. That's the part but that confuses people. But what it does, but what it does, is it actually gives any third party a lot stronger go at actually wow. getting a lot more. Um, the world is just getting better every time. Yeah. It's better than what we've got. The yeah. IRB is better than what we've got. And, and it's an answer to proportional representation. Yes. Is yes. what it is. Yeah. There's so many things we don't have that would be that would be better than what we've got. Yeah. Um, one problem in California, and I hope it doesn't. Come here, please don't let it come here. Uh, we, the voters, before I went, before I moved to California, the voters voted in Arnold Schwarzenegger's idea. Well, it wasn't his idea, but he signed it. Um, top two primary. So now in California, the last two elections, it's an open primary. There can be as, a whole bunch of Democratic candidates, a whole bunch of Republicans, a whole bunch of Greens for the same office. Mm -hmm. Everybody runs, it's a guerrilla primary, then only the top two vote getters go to the general. So it's so split. they can be both Democrats or both Republicans yes. or both whatever. So what they've done is they've scrubbed all of us off the general. Nobody gets to the general anymore in California. There are not currently elections in California. They're not, there are not Democratic elections in California. Hmm. It's really awful. We, the Green Party has two active lawsuits. Uh, one is hopefully getting resolved in two weeks. And I'm, I filed intent for a, a, a campaign in 2014. I'm just waiting to see what happens with the lawsuit. If the lawsuit's not successful, there's no reason to run for office in California, uh, unless you're a Democrat. Uh, or in some counties, Republicans can get elected. Uh, it's really, 
It's horrible. Um, but that's not, you know, it's California. <laughs> so whatever you do, don't let anybody at the part-time assembly vote in anything that resembles top two primary. It's horrible. Um, two or three Does that make Republicans um, vote for the top two Democrats? Well, in California, most of the races, what I'm seeing is, like, like in the race I, I filed in tent, there are five Democrats, myself, and nobody else. And that's uh, the Secretary of State race. And there's a really excellent Democratic candidate. He'll probably make it through the top two. So the Republicans have to vote on those. Yeah. Well, well that, if they don't run anyone. Well, they don't they, make well when they run their primaries, California an open or a closed primary? It is now an open top two primary. OK, so, so they can cross over in the primary. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's, a, it's this weird guerrilla thing. And it means that. It's like, why have a general? Yeah. Why have a general? Yeah. The two richest people mm -hmm. progress <laughs> to the general. That's what's happening. And they mostly are Democrats. Uh, although, like, I'm in Marin, and there, there are a lot of Republicans in Marin, mm -hmm. and a lot of Democrats. Um, and a lot of Greens, thankfully. Um, OK, so that's where we're at. Um, so so the, the big goal is to get um, more Greens showing up for meetings like this. And then if anyone is interested in being a co-chair or uh, you know, any of the offices or an at-large, uh, in order to restart, it's my opinion that we would need at least the two co-chairs. We would need the secretary defined because that's the person who issues the formal document to the secretary of state. And the formal document is one page. It'll be a letter like this with a new date and new names and new address and and then if if those people once they're elected decide to just continue the bylaws have not been edited since 2005 um, the the nevada bylaws are four pages the california bylaws get edited every five minutes and i don't even know how many pages we're up to and i i was yelling and screaming yesterday about it that so I would advocate for something more like four pages is great, because nobody ever refers to it. It's so plain and simple. The only thing that's murky is the IRV. Um, when, when, when you elect some people, I think it says use, use IRV, but it might just say it's recommended. Let me see real quick. It says the executive council should be two co-chairs, one of each gender if possible. So it's not even mandatory. Um, a secretary, a treasurer, four at large. Um, they're selected at the first general meeting following each spring equinox. This is the spring equinox, I think. Um, this meeting is on the spring equinox, so it doesn't have to be at the next meeting that's following it, this. It's well, I I call the meeting at the earliest possible moment. So so we're we're like just starting really quick, um, and. The co-chair and treasurer shall be filed, I'm just reading verbatim, uh, shall be filled by using instant runoff voting. So that means we'll have to figure out what that means. Um, and the at-large members shall be elected by preference voting. So it, it, it's preference voting is just simpler. It's, you, it, they're ranked by preference. And, and I was here when we elected the last group we elected the last group by email and by consensus. And I don't, I don't know, does, anyone, does everybody know about consensus process? It's basically you talk it out and people raise issues and then if they're blocking issues, you just keep talking because you haven't raised consensus, but you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a pain. And that allows for some discussion. You'd yeah. make a better secretary, I'd make a better co-chair, like why don't you take that position, I take that one, is everyone agreeable with it? Yeah. Like, Discussions. Yeah, and you just keep going around until there's like no blocking concern. And then there's one, once there's no blocking concern, then the, the, the group's like, okay, do we have consensus? And then nobody raises their hand saying, I object. Then, then that means they're, you know, that, that's how we did it last time. And then, and then we, um, we did it by email. So we just said, here are the, here are the candidates. So what I was suggesting um, is as as the nominees become known, and so far there are two that I'm aware of, um, 
uh, if you are interested in some position, yeah. I would suggest co-chair or secretary, because those are the mission critical ones. Okay. And, and then um, Christina uh, Lay, L-A-I-S, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right. She is currently on the National Youth Committee of the Green Party. I, I'm, I'm not sure what their legal name is, but basically it's the national group of young people. Um, Asher Platts in Maine is on it. He's a really high profile Green. Uh, his uh, handle is the Punk Patriot. Does a lot. He does a lot of. Uh, he just ran for office in Maine, and uh, as a clean money candidate, meaning uh, he could only take donations of like ten dollars or something. So he got a whole bunch of ten dollar donations, and it's all documented. Um, so so yeah, I would highly. Um, I would definitely. Uh, I would definitely nominate you as uh, if you want to be co chair or secretary. It'd be awesome. And then uh, uh, Christina. Uh, Lay is interested in an at-large position, so we have at least two nominees. So if anyone else is but interested, she's not interested in co-chair, secretary, or treasurer. Um, not yet, but maybe. Uh, she, right now, her whole focus is really on the national uh, youth uh, group, and it's it, they're, they're pretty busy. Is she based in Vegas? She's right? in Vegas. Okay. Yeah, she's in Las Vegas. And so those are the two nominees now. And then, uh, you know, if anyone here wants to be a nominee, all it means is you're a nominee. And then what we'll do is um, I'll create a ballot, and we can post the ballot. And then, and then uh, I, I initially suggested online that we would have, oh, actually in the meeting minutes, um, that we would have online voting from March 21st through 31st. So that'll get, you know, no one can claim that we're trying to pull up coup or anything. Because there's no there's no one to depose, <laughs> so, and and also I I'm in direct contact with the Secretary of State's office, so uh, we he is basically watching everything I do. <laughs> so and we you have to be registered re, uh, Green Party right now. Um, in order to serve as a, an to officer, to yeah, in order to serve as an officer, you have to register Green Party. Prior. Um, let me see what it says. I think it's just, let me see what happens here. Um, it says, the council members shall, there's a few things already wrong. Members of the council shall serve uh, terms of two years, commencing the day after the election. So it would be the day after March 31st, I guess. And they, so it's two years. The terms of the co-chairs shall be staggered. So I think that means we only need to elect one co-chair initially, and then we and that we need to elect a second. Or a year. In a year, in a year, the, the staggered by a year, or can it be staggered by three months or six months or something? It says two being elected be per year. Oh, so. so so all of the seats are staggered, and. Two of each are each uh, elected each year, so that there, there would be two officers each year, two at large each year. It seems like we ought to like so we have a full council. We ought to like some people for a one year term and some people for a two year term. So yeah. that in the future they're staggered, but mm -hmm. we otherwise we can't really do anything for a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we should fill it up. I think we should fill it up. And and the thing is, I I really it's a it's a formality initially because we have to have a piece of paper that has the, the, the people that we can locate and and the mail goes to a, a PO box and we and we get this this stamp. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is if somebody has somebody gets a great job in Pittsburgh and has to split in a week, uh, then the the council can elect a new, can nominate or elect a new person to fill that role. And Every time you have to do that, you send another piece of paper. It says, oh, now we have this person. And, so it's, and really, it's just you write a letter. You, as long as the secretary sends it to the secretary of state, and he, he puts a stamp on it. OK. Oh, oh OK. Uh, so Christina Lay just said, hey, we're here at Clark County Meeting. Do you have live stream going? I'll just write back, hey. The live stream 
is not connecting. Can we use Google Chat or Skype or something? Yeah, I'm using Google um, Hangout. And let me try one more time. I think they maybe were just okay. Here we go. All right. So yeah, definitely. I think we should try to fill it up. Because um, I, I had a bunch of people that I had invited that intended to come, but some were busy. I just texted three females to try to get more representation from both <laughs> sexes. And uh, yeah, I think we need we need a couple more females. One of them is on her way, and a couple can't make it. But and he knows cute ones too. Swear they're going to be at the, swear they're going to be at the next <laughs> meeting. Um, so should I ask if they're willing to be nominated for a position? Mm -hmm. I think the bylaws said that they have to be here in person, but if we're doing it electronically anyway. Oh, we can have a follow up meeting. Um, yeah, I was planning. I was planning if we need to, we could have another meeting next month. Um, okay. Let me try Brandon one more time. Send Brandon an email. Okay, we got it. Brandon Parcell at gmail.com. All right, Let's see if he gets it. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, we need ideally six more people. And, and I just wanna make sure we're crossing all the T's. Um, so it gives us time to switch parties mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're gonna hold off on nominations till then. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I think we can nominate, we don't have to nominate everybody today. Okay. We, we can, it can be an accreted thing. Cause we, um, well, between now and then, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, term, let me just make sure that's true. Uh, members of council, so, well see, because we have three greens here, we, I should just read this. Um, we, this is an official meeting of the state party. And so that means we are taking the responsibility, the, the registered greens are taking the responsibility. We can make executive level decisions. We 